A lot of people think that science is sort of cold and impersonal, but those of us who do science view the great basic science as every bit as, as beautiful as great art or great music. There's nothing more beautiful than, you know, the theory of relativity, which I don't really understand that well, but I know it's beautiful. My name's Ben Neal. I work at the Princess Margaret Hospital, where I run a large research group, and I also am the director of research for the Institute. I'm a basic scientist at heart. I mean, I'm also a trained physician, but I really respect and admire pure basic science. As the director of a cancer institute, I feel our mission is to uh, translate that basic science into patient impact. It's sometimes hard to imagine what's happened in just the short time that I've been in science. When I uh, started graduate school in 1977, we didn't know a single specific gene that caused cancer. We know literally thousands of different genes that uh, contribute in various ways to different kinds of cancers. Surprisingly, a lot of successful scientists um, have sports backgrounds. Scientists are very competitive. A lot of times, people in the public think that's a bad thing. There's no question that people in my lab are working harder because they know other people may be working on the same thing. People want to um, find things out because they're really interested in them, but they also want to be the first to find them out and to get the notoriety and, and the recognition that goes with that. There's a, an important balance there. So you don't want people to be competing you know, so avidly over the same thing that there's no progress. I think there's such a thing as too much competition. But there's also just the right amount, um, sort of like the Goldilocks spot. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. I was pretty much convinced by the time I went to university that uh, I wanted to work in cancer research. Cancer is a, a very personal thing for me, but it's also a, uh, it's a really uh, important uh, basic biology problem. When I started in graduate school, we had been working on this idea about how a class of viruses could cause cancer. There was nothing known about cancer genes. By the time I started actually working in the lab, which was about three and a half years later, at that time there were five known cancer genes or oncogenes. My graduate advisor had this idea that uh, maybe these viruses would just integrate randomly in the genome and then occasionally they would come to rest next to a cancer gene and turn it on. That discovery was actually made on a Friday afternoon. I was supposed to go to softball for my softball league, and then I was supposed to leave the next day at 4 o'clock to go to California for a wedding. And he comes by, and I said, so they're all negative, right? He says, uh, he says no. He says, the first two points are positive. So we were actually kind of lucky, because it could have been any of the thousand oncogenes, but it turns out that it was one of those original five, knowing that that was a really big discovery, and that we were the only people who had it in the world, and that was pretty amazing. Almost never a minute that I'm not thinking about some aspect of what's going on in our lab. I know that when my kids were younger, um, they'd be talking to me and they said they could tell. In fact, they often said, "You're not thinking. You're thinking about experiments, aren't you, Daddy?" Because they could tell that I sort of had this sort of glassy-eyed look, I guess, and I was sort of nodding. Yeah. You're always consumed with what you're working on. And so if I ever wake up in the middle of the night and I have an idea, I just type it on my BlackBerry, which is really kind of sick. I know that. Most of the time it's in the shower, because that's sort of nobody can bother me there. If you want to be at the highest level of any field of endeavor, you, you basically have to be pretty focused and restricted your time mostly to that.